Oh, thank you so much. Well, hello. Hello, everyone. Um, this is a fantastic honour to be invited back here. Um, I was at Thomas More University two years ago for the International Days then, and everyone made me feel so welcome, and it was truly spectacular. So it's great to be here again, and doing it in a very, very different way this time. Um, I hope you're all getting used to the cameras. I, I'm lucky because lots of my sexual health courses are online anyway, so I'm used to standing at home and presenting in front of a camera as if there are hundreds of people standing there in front of me. So uh, I hope this goes well. You'll have an opportunity to participate throughout this. I'm not going to talk at you for a whole hour. So I've set this up in Mentimeter and you'll see on the next slide, you'll be able to see the code. Uh, so uh, what we're, we're going to look at in this session is making sexual health center stage. And it's really important, especially from the point of entrepreneurship, because sexual health, as I'll show you in the presentation, is one of the issues that's often quite silenced. Maybe there's not too many sessions um, during your education programs, maybe there are no courses or no ways for you to learn about sexual health. So it's very much down to entrepreneurs, for those people who have got an interest in it to say, hello, I want something done on this. And that's going to be really important so that you can be ambassadors for sexual health. So I'll give you opportunities to participate and feel free to type messages as well. Or um, if you're using Twitter, go on to the um, hashtag ID. 2021 underscore TM and you'll see my Twitter account as well and feel free to send me messages that way as well or Rudy will be uh, looking at them as they pop up. So, just to prove that I have been to, um, uh, to Thomas More University, here are some of the photographs from last time. And you'll see the hashtag for Twitter and my own account there. So, my name is David Evans, and I'm Professor in Sexualities and Genders, Health and Wellbeing at the University of Greenwich, which is based in London in the UK. Um, we have whole loads of courses and programs on sexual health, right from bachelor degree through master's and right to, um, up, up to doctoral studies as well. So there are lots of different things going on and I can share some uh, materials with you later uh, so that you can have a look at those if you're interested. Um, especially for our nurses and midwives, uh, I'm very lucky in that I can present on every single program. So for the three years of nursing or midwifery studies, and with nursing, we have the four main groups. So adult nursing, children, mental health, and learning disabilities nursing. So we have all of those. We have the midwifery programs. Um, and we have paramedic science as well. And all of these can either be a bachelor degree, so for first registration, or then we have postgraduate courses right through to masters um, in advanced clinical practice and to doctorate. So sexual health um, is integrated right the way across all of these programs. And it's lovely to be able to do that. So last time I presented, um, I was asked to do something on uh, raising the awareness about sexual health. And a phrase that I used then on the 15th International Days was, if there's no health without sexual health, equally, there's no um, education without sexual health education. So this is very much aimed at you as students. What can you be doing? But also at your educators as well. So really important there to raise the voice of this. And on that last um, international days. This was one of the slides I used because we were asked to talk about language and communication. So from the point of view of sexual health, I said, well, look, it's really important for us to be able to talk about it. Now shift to 2021, when the whole message here is looking at entrepreneurship, and then for you as individuals, how can you talk about this? And especially if you're maybe at universities or in parts of the world, where it's not traditional to talk about sexual health matters. So there may be laws or religious customs or traditions that make it rather difficult to talk about sexual health. So what we'll explore in this is what do I actually mean by the term sexual health? And then what can you do about it in whichever part of the world you're in and um, especially within the customs you're in, but also looking at how people do have problems around sexual health.
So as nurses and midwives, if we're saying that we're meant to care for people holistically, how can we care for them holistically if we're not addressing their sexual health and well-being? So it's really like walking a tightrope between what may be expected of us from a culture point of view, but also what's the reality of people's lives. So that's what we look at here. And if you're on Menti, so either on your phones or on a new internet browser uh, tab, if you go to menti.com and the questions are going to pop up using the following code, 68 19 Okay, so I think the next slide is probably a question for you. So yeah, here's what we're going to be doing, making sexual health go center stage. And here's the first question I want to ask you. So you can type a few words in here. What do you personally understand by the term sexual health? So if you go back to your universities now and say, oh, I did a session on sexual health. And somebody says, what does that mean? What would you say about it? So let me give you um, a little while to answer this one. What do you understand by the term sexual health? <laughs>